Six indescribable joys of seeing God. So keep going in your Bibles to Isaiah 33, 16 and 17. And this is what it says. Number one, he will dwell on high. high, high what does that mean? The place that God offers closeness to God. You'll dwell on high with me is, is what he's talking about. Number two, Isaiah 33 continues. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. So God says, I offer you true security. You, you, you can be secure in me. You can be bold. You can be confident. If you will choose to do, cultivate these choices I've given you already in verses 14 and 15. Uh, thirdly, he said, bread will be given to you. Do you know what most of us struggle with? We struggle with this hunger for something. And the Lord says, I want you to be satisfied by me. I want to be with you. And I want you to say, I have Christ. I don't really need anything else. Now, many people, now I'm talking to you, young people. You, most young people struggle with this kind of raging, you know, hormonal driven sexual desire. And you know what most Christians think? If I could only get married, then I wouldn't have these struggles. That's not true. Do you know how I know that? The Bible says the, the smartest man that ever lived, Solomon, the man who had 300 wives and 700 concubines, he had 1,000 women always at his disposal. Do you know what he said? The eyes of a man are never satisfied. We have, humans have this incredible hungering that one woman or a thousand will not satisfy. The same as one dollar or a thousand or a billion won't satisfy. You see, it's not just for sexual things, it's for money, it's for fame, it's for popularity, it's for pleasure. We just hunger. The biblical word for hunger is lust. And lust grows bigger every day. Now, what does God say? I want to satisfy you. This verse is the incredible reminder that when we spend time with God, He satisfies us. And we never feel empty. We never feel unsatisfied. We feel complete. Isaiah 33, 16 and 17 says, He will dwell on high. Those are the endless delights of being near God. His place of defense will be the fortress of rock. That's true security. And bread will be given him. God says, I will satisfy your longings. Here's the next one. His water will be sure. That's unending refreshment. The Bible says before we were saved, we were so thirsty. After we're saved, look at John 7 with me. Take your Bible, look at verse 37. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out. Now, the backdrop is this. The whole nation of Israel were supposed to come three times a year to Jerusalem. The city would swell into over a million people at the high point in this festival where normally there were just maybe 100,000. It was 10 times as many people every part of the country. And they would all come for these ceremonies. And of course, they were very observant so that everyone was quiet and listening because the high priest would get up on a platform and say things and do things. See what it says in 37? The last day, the great day, it's the climax of the whole gathering of all the people from all, from Dan to Beersheba were there. While they were all silently waiting for the high priest to do his thing, one of the pilgrims who had walked down there from Capernaum uh, and, and had slipped in, named Jesus, stands up. And look what he does. And cried out. The word cried out means he screamed at the top of his voice. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Why did he say that? Because we were all born thirsty. And Jesus is the water of life, 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 life. And Jesus offers to us, verse 38, 
He who believes in me, Jesus continued, as the scripture says, out of his heart will flow rivers of life-giving water. And then John adds a note, but he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given. What is Jesus saying? He's saying, when you come to me, you'll never hunger, John 6. You'll never thirst, John 7. His water will be sure. Jesus offers unending refreshment so that we're not restlessly looking for something to satisfy us. He does. Verse 17. Now this, this is the blessing. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. This is the greatest attraction. We get to see the king in his beauty. And what else? Number six, they will see the land that is very far off. This is called the, the pilgrim mentality. Do you remember what Hebrews 11 says? It's in the earth. We're to see a land that is far off. We are supposed to have daily glimpses into heaven to see our king in his beauty. The one who died for us, the one who loved us, who loosed us from our sins. We're supposed to look at him every day. And when we look at him, it satisfies us. Now some of you, you don't even like to read the Bible. You don't even understand the Bible when you read it. And I'm...